I am so excited to share my latest resource, downloadable print your own flashcard decks. These have been created following my many years working with children of all abilities in the clinical setting and my themed flashcard decks work. The kids love them because they're engaging and they encourage movement, learning, coping skills, and just plain fun. From dinosaurs to Halloween, each deck includes suggested and themed centering techniques, warm-ups, guided meditation, relaxation, yoga-based movement, and games. Each card in the deck includes multiple yoga-based practices to choose from, meaning you can enjoy a different experience each time you play, and there will always be something that's suitable and accessible for the child you are working with or the setting you are working in. These are highly adaptable tools, and they work in the classroom, hospital, office, or home setting. Download and print on card or paper stock of your choice, and enjoy creative, adaptable and accessible adventures for many years to come with children of all abilities and in all settings. I promise you will not regret adding a set of two of these to your resource collection. And keep checking in. I have created a lot of these decks over the many years I worked in the clinical setting with children of all abilities and I'm slowly updating and releasing them to the public so that all children can benefit from these wonderful tools. movement, meditation, and mindfulness, a training program for pediatric professionals, educators, and parents. Session 13 is games, and we are going to explore movement, meditation, and mindfulness games that are developmentally supportive for children and fun and engaging. So we've talked a lot in previous webinars about the essential elements of creating beneficial movement, meditation, and mindfulness sessions for children. And I've just got a little review here on the screen of some of the different um, formatting and sequencing suggestions for successful movement, meditation, and mindfulness sessions. So we have the introduction, we have mindfulness, we have movement warm-up, and then we have our movement adventure. That's where we do all the stretches and moving of the body. And then we include games and activities. So we've discussed props. We've discussed arts and crafts and journaling. And now we're going to focus on games. So how can we incorporate games into the session um, to benefit children and also to incorporate all of these things? And I kind of stopped on games, but we also have meditation and closing discussion. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be in this order. We have discussed this in previous webinars where it's nice to have this structure, but then to have the ability to see what your class needs, see what your students need, and switch the order up accordingly. So one thing that I love about including games are obviously the benefits. They're fun and engaging. You can also use games to manage energy levels. And by this, I mean, if you notice that the class is really not engaged, they're kind of like in a bit of a funk, maybe we would, instead of starting with mindfulness or a warm up, maybe you would start with a game as an icebreaker to really get the energy up and get kids engaged and interested in your session. Um, increased learning. Games can actually support and reinforce learning. Not everyone is a visual or auditory learner, so they don't learn just by sight or hearing. A lot of kids are kinesthetic and tactile learners. So to incorporate this into games, not only what you're teaching the child in terms of movement, meditation, and mindfulness skills, which also can be reinforced in games, of course, 
But if you're theming your session around something educational, you can also reinforce this by using games. And by this, I mean, if you're theming a session around something the child is learning in school, this, this information or this knowledge can also be reinforced through games. And it's just a fun way to approach that learning style for the child. Um, and then, of course, with games, especially if they're including movement, and we'll discuss as we go through some of these games the core benefits of each one. We've got physical, cognitive, sensory, and social development are all supported through games. So let's discuss physical development. We are helping children develop fine and gross motor skills. A lot of games incorporate the need for um, developing fine uh, gross motor skills. Bilateral coordination and integration, flexibility, mobility, stability, and strength, core tone and core stability and core strength, and of course, balance. And you'll see this as we discuss some of these games. Not all games incorporate all of these things, but we will discuss and I'll point out and you'll start to see, um, and, and you yourself may even think of some games you played in school as a child and so start to realize, oh, these were actually not just fun, these were strategic by the PE teacher or the school teacher, whoever was um, leading these games for you as a child. So cognitive development, how can games help with that? Well, again, Movement and balance and motor planning, this all comes from the brain. So by incorporating games that require these skills, you're helping to support the development of these skills. Body awareness and spatial orientation, particularly when you're playing games with other students. Bilateral movement and coordination, again, this is a brain function, not just a motor skill. Memory recall and mental processing remembering the instructions, remembering how to play. We even have some games that are memory-based games. Language processing and communication skills, following the instruction, expressing to communicating with others who are playing the game when that's required. The ability to follow directions, very important for children to learn this. And present moment awareness and mindfulness skills, you'll see, and in previous webinars we have explored lots of games and fun ways to engage children in breathing and mindfulness skills. So we're just helping to support and develop those um, through games. We're going to explore some today, some we'll retouch on um, ones that we've reviewed in previous webinars, and we'll also be introducing some new games today. So sensory development, how do games support sensory development? Body awareness spatial awareness, speech development, and oral processing. When you think back to some of the breathing games, the tongue positioning, the mouth positioning, this all helps with speech development and oral processing, and it is required to play these games. Um, a balance of sensory input. So a lot of the games require fun props, body movement, and all of these things, um, all of these skills require sensory development or some form of sensory input and then sensory processing. So sensory processing is really, um, to, to boil it down in a nutshell, sensory processing is the ability for the brain to correctly process information that it has been received and respond appropriately. So for example, um, if I touch something that is warm for my brain to understand that that is warm or that is hot, um, I shouldn't touch it. Um, so that's just a, a small example of sensory processing. We will go a lot deeper into it when we come to the webinar on uh, teaching movement, meditation and mindfulness um, for children with sensory processing disorders. But for now, when you just think about playing games, there's a lot of sensory input required, and this is all, the more sensory input developing children receive, um, the more supportive that is of helping children to develop their sensory systems. 
and we'll move on to games and social development. So self-regulation skills, moods, emotions, reactions, and responses. We're all learning these things through movement, meditation, mindfulness skills, but we also, these are reinforced when we're playing games and we're applying these skills when working with others. The ability to shift from reflexive to reflective behavioral patterns and responses. So again, these skills can be applied while playing games and they can also be acquired and learned through these games, particularly when we're strategically planning games. As I've mentioned before, and all of the things that I teach in movement, meditation, mindfulness, we want it to be fun and engaging, but there's always a little strategy behind it, or as I joke with the kids, there's method behind my madness. But truly there is, is a strategy and a lot of planning that goes in place to provide children with the skills that they need. And we can do this through fun and play. Communication and leadership skills are taught through games, particularly when we take turns for our children to lead the games or um, take some kind of leadership role within the game. And also to step back and allow others to do the same and be respectful. Um, supporting appropriate social interaction. So that is just what I said, being aware of others, being empathetic to others and allowing them to take their turn, waiting for your turn. Um, and all kinds of other social skills, just all that interaction you get through um, games. Eye contact um, is also another important social skill um, that children can develop through games. Teamwork and cooperation, um, and the ability to participate and function in a group setting, all vital skills that we can help children to develop through games. And then finally, connection with each other, community, communication, compassion, and empathy. So these are all wonderful, vital social skills that can be supported through the games that we'll be discussing today. Now, I mentioned earlier the four styles of learning and some kids not um, necessarily responding in a typical auditory or visual environment. So visual processes learn through observation. Auditory processes learn through listening. And then we have our kinesthetic and tactile processes who learn more through movement, through hands-on activities and touch. So when we are reinforcing or even just teaching through games or through my movement, meditation and mindfulness, there is an element of visual, of course, because we're showing what we're doing. There's an element of auditory because we are instructing verbally what we will be doing but then there's also the hands-on element so we really are approaching all four styles of learning which means kids are going to be exposed to all four styles and those who typically gravitate toward one style because it's their comfort zone will be exposed to all of the others which is really wonderful when you think about it because they may not ordinarily seek out those experiences but perhaps through repetition and through playing games, participating in movement, meditation and mindfulness, this exposure will help children to develop um, those learning styles as well or to be able to at least function um, within those learning styles and not just the one that they are comfortable with or gravitate towards naturally. So again, reinforcing anything that you're learning. And we're, we use games, as you'll see, as we're going to explore today. I've actually di divided the games I'm going to discuss today into compart compartmentalize them into whether they are a movement game or a mindful breathing game or, or a meditation game. So that's just reinforcing the movement, meditation, mindfulness component. But as I mentioned earlier, you can also reinforce anything that you are, the child is learning in school or any strategic skills that you need to focus on with a child. And you can target your games to meet those skills. So let's just quickly review the essential elements of a movement, meditation and mindfulness session. Imaginative and creative play. Well, of course, games can be imaginative and creative. And that's what makes them fun. Dance or movement, 
Yes, we can incorporate this through games and play. Breath work, plenty of breathing games. We've already explored some in previous webinars and I'll be covering some more today. Music and song. We've covered that in a previous webinar. We also made a lot of props when we did the prop webinar, oh, sorry, excuse me, the arts and crafts webinar. We made our music props. So there's lots of ways to incorporate that playfulness and fun. We can also bring music and song into the game component as well. Our props, we use a lot of props. We make our own props. We use props and we, um, in our movement meditation mindfulness sessions, and we can also use them in games. And they can be very engaging and supportive of sensory development. And relaxation. There's even ways to play relaxation games. And we've explored some of these in meditation for active kids. Not all kids are comfortable or able to yet sit passively in passive meditation. Some kids are super challenged being still. So meeting them where they're at and playing mindfulness games that lead into more passive relaxation is the key. We explored that in a previous webinar, but I'm going to review some of the games today as well. So we need to plan games that support developmental goals that meet the appropriate learning style. And as I mentioned, pretty much most games meet all four styles that support your students' needs. So whatever your student needs or your students, if it's a group, you can incorporate games that support the development and help that child develop in any areas where they may need some extra support. We can introduce essential elements, as I just mentioned, for example, mindful breathing through games. And of course, we create a sense of joy and fun, which is engaging. And it also helps kids to want to participate, to want to come back. And I'll give a perfect example. This week, I had a young patient I was working with in the hospital where I teach yoga therapy and he um, need, he was he needed to do some breath work. He was recovering from pneumonia, had a lot of mucus um, that needed to get moving. And he had a boring old spirometer to work with and had to work on it a certain amount of times a day. I came in and introduced a breathing game, the, which we have covered in a previous webinar. It was a game of air basketball where we were playing basketball shooting hoops using our breath. That was way much more fun for this kid than a spirometer. And then I challenged him when I left after we played together to play that game for a certain amount of time, for example, one minute, set a timer, and then try to improve his score each time. So I left him with the challenge. He was up for that challenge. It was much more fun than using a spirometer but definitely achieving his goal, uh, his medical goals of needing to take deep, full breaths. He even started coughing during our session and getting some of that mucus moving. So this is a perfect example of where you can create a sense of fun and joy and playfulness, but still target something strategically that the child needs in the moment to support their health, their wellness, their development, whatever it may be. So it's not all fun and games. There is a lot of strategy behind it, but it is all fun and games when you're a child. So let's look at some games for one to two players. And because often we hear games and we're like, well, you know, I don't have a group. I'm teaching individuals. So there are plenty of games that can be adapted for one to two players. Of course, any of the games for one to two players can be played with larger groups too. So I want you to be mindful of that. This does not this is not restricted to one or to two players. So you'll see on the screen, we have um, a couple of friends with bean bags balancing. I, I don't have one handy right now, but they have bean bags balancing on their head. And we're doing some mindful movement by keeping the bean bag balanced on their head. So a lot going on here. Um, body awareness, spatial awareness, movement, controlling our movement instead of flinging our body around. When we have a beanbag balanced on our head, we have to move much more mindfully and really think about controlling our body. Um, posture, balance, 
um, and coordination all come into play here. Then if we go to the top right on the screen, you'll see us, we have some friends playing a game of pencil. So they have a pencil, um, they're holding it palm to palm and they're slowly moving it around without dropping the pencil. And you'll see we've actually moved on here. They, we've increased the challenge in, when we've taken this photo and the children are using two hands. And I always encourage them to move them in different directions as it gets a little more challenging. So this is a focus-based game. This is meditation. It's so difficult to be thinking of anything else at all when you're playing a game like this. You're so focused on the pencil. But we also start to work on communication, nonverbal communication with a partner, teamwork, coordination, trust. Um, we're also, when we get a little trickier, I have challenged children to sit back away from each other and use the feet and have, hold the pencil with each other's foot so then we start to engage the core as well. So this is a mindful uh, mindfulness or a meditation game that's just wonderful for children, especially those who are challenged by being still. And then the bottom right, you'll see we have a little kid rolled up in a yoga mat. So this is a butterfly roll where we roll in a yoga mat or a blanket, and that is the cocoon. For a little sensory input, you can paint, just using your hands, paint the colors of the butterfly wings, and then we gently roll the unroll the child so we get that rolling. Um, now, this is a lot of sensory input for the child, a lot of tactile input. Um, it's a lot of fun. And then when we're rolling in and out of the, the mat, we are also um, using a lot of the core as well. So, and that's just a really fun game. The kids love this one. And you don't have to be a butterfly. I've rolled them in a hot dog roll and we've dressed the hot dog with chili sauce and um, onions and all the kinds of toppings that you may like on your hot dog. So you, again, as I've really a mantra of mine throughout this webinar series and any professional development that I teach is you are only limited by your imagination. And then my other mantra is, if in doubt, ask a child. Because sometimes you may be presenting hot dog roll or a butterfly roll for this game, and a child will come up with something super awesome. And you'd be like, sure. And that's one you can also put in your memory bank to use in a future class. So if in doubt, ask a child, and you are only ever limited by your imagination. So let's explore a few more games. So meditation, mindful meditation, moving into passive meditation that are still games is one example is the shush game. And I'm going to play a video in just a little bit. We did view this in a previous webinar, but I'm going to play it again today. Magic feather meditation. So again, this is a sensory input game. So we use a feather and we gently massage the body using the feather. So you see, I'm just gently doing it on my hand for today. Upward strokes are what energize you. So upward strokes send the message to the brain through the nervous system. Hey, it's time to wake up. Let's get some energy. Downward strokes are calming and soothing. So the way I remember this is up, we wake up, down, we go down for a nap. And we can do this all over the body. You know, obviously you want to avoid the eyes, the nose, the ears, um, the mouth, but all around, either upward or down. I use this, um, I teach a lot of my parents um, in the hospital setting this to help with their child if they're having trouble sleeping. And also it's a nice way to wake a child up for a procedure if they're sleeping, um, which can happen a lot in a hospital. So it's just a nice way to wake a child up as well as help a child take a little nap and it's just, it, it's, kids love it. Um, and it's a nice calming, soothing meditation. It's also body awareness, sensory input, um, as well as that calming, relaxing, meditative tool. So this is a really wonderful tool. Um, mindfulness games, 
There are three we're going to explore today. Um, for this one, I'm going to have to move the camera and move myself to the floor. So I'm going to hold off on showing those for just a moment. But we're going to explore Beanbag Toss, which is a focus-based game. Another air game. We've explored some air games, and I just talked about the air basketball example I used just yesterday in the hospital. But air games we have explored in previous webinars, and I'm going to demonstrate another one today. They're all, and again, this is just showing that using the imagination. It's the exact same concept of, as the ones I have previously demonstrated, air soccer and air basketball. Today, we are going, I'm going to demonstrate air golf, exact same concept, but we'll talk a little bit more about that and the egg and spoon. Movement, so movement games. Spaghetti boil is just a fun one where we run around and we pretend we're spaghetti boiling in the pot. So we start with that awareness of the body being stiff and we start to loosen it up as we get warmer. It's a great warm up. The butterfly roll we just demonstrated, that's a lot of movement. And once the butterfly is um, comes out of its cocoon, you can go into butterfly pose and some butterfly stretches, for example. So you can always segue that game into your movement adventure. Memory game. Now this is a great one where we're talking about memory recall. And I just have a little example of just, this is like a little travel. I have to bring it a little closer. I have the camera on wide today, so it's not as close. So it's just a little example of a travel um, memory game set. So, and you don't have to buy an actual memory game set. You can make your own little cards of images as long as you have double of each image. So I'll place these face down and we take turns flipping the cards. And then when we get a match, we can make a yoga pose for it, a yoga based stretch or movement. We could make a breathing technique or a, um, a relaxation technique based on what we found. So a little example I found there was a butterfly. So if I had that match, then perhaps I would do butterfly pose or I do a breathing technique where I'm moving my wings or we could do the butterfly roll rolling in the cocoon. So that's just a nice fun game that could then segue into your whole session. So just to recap, mindfulness-based games teach breath control through play and games. Movement-based games you can use to warm up. You can use them to review postures and stretches. Um, meditation are focus-related games and activities. Um, and you can also use games, um, and I'm going to demonstrate this when we do the egg and spoon. You can use games as a recentering or redirection tool for class management as well. So, and then we have an example of games that can cover all. And in a way, the memory game can because you can incorporate just you, you're free to whatever your matches are, whatever your images are, you're free to make up a, a, a movement, meditation, or mindfulness activity based on that image. So that really does fall under all. But activity run is where we have different stations around the room um, set up and you, the children move from one to the next and participate in whatever activity. So maybe there's a Hoberman sp sphere on one in one area. Perhaps in another area, there's a suggested yoga pose. Perhaps in another area, there's a little bell to move from one end of the mat to or one spot in the room to another. So these are all different mindfulness games and you can have just different activities set up. Mirroring is a fun um, activity for kids. We've explored this in previous webinars and that's where we are moving and mirroring each other. I like to do it in groups where everybody takes a turn. So we're all focused on the one child at, at the one time. That may be too intense for some children. So to break children off into little smaller groups also works. Being bad balance, um, we saw that one just a little while ago in a previous photo and the pencils as well. So these kind of cover, can cover meditation, movement, and mindfulness um, in, in, in those games. So I'm going to play the video of the shush game. And then once we've shown the video, I'm going to demonstrate the beanbag toss 
the air games, um, air golf today, and the egg and spoon. So. Hi, I'm Lisa Roberts and I'm with Jonah again. Yes. Hi, Jonah. Hi. Hi. So Jonah and I are going to demonstrate some games that you can play to introduce meditation to children. So these are more focus-based games that actually start to connect children to the present moment. Um, really great for active kids who may be challenged by sitting perfectly still. You'll see how these games encourage that inner reflection and stillness and are still fun for children to play. Are you ready, Jonah? Yes. So the first game we're going to play is called the shush game. Okay? Mm -hmm. We take turns and I will say, for example, if it's my turn, and then I sit very quietly and I wait until I feel, smell, or hear something. And then I will say what that is, and then you take your turn. And it sounds easy, because in the beginning we're gonna notice sounds that are obvious and maybe sensations that are obvious. Or cars outside. Exactly, there's little things providing noises for us, but the longer we play, the more still we have to become, and the more we have to start listening really deeply, feeling really deeply, because it's going, the obvious sounds, we're already going to name those, so it's going to get harder, and we'll have to be quieter and stiller. Okay, you up for the challenge? Yeah. All right, do you want to go first? I'll go first. Okay, let's do it. You hear the TV, okay. I hear somebody talking in our living room. I wonder who that is. I smell hot dogs. You smell hot dogs? Ooh, I wonder who's cooking hot dogs today. feel the yoga mat under my feet. It feels very different to the where my skin is touching the air. I can hear the cars outside. Right, if you listen, you can hear the cars. And we are 11 floors up in our apartment. So the cars are really far. So we're starting to listen really deep if we can hear the cars. You ready? Let's go. Shh. I can hear the air conditioning making that little humming, buzzing sound. Mm. Shh. I can actually hear the wind. I can feel the air on my skin. I think the air conditioner just kicked in a little. I can feel the yoga mat. It's actually like tickling my toes. It's tickling your toes. <laughs> I can feel my breath. Your eyes are closed. So sometimes when we close our eyes, we can hear a little deeper. We can smell a little stronger. It just helps us to get rid of any distractions so we can really focus on what we hear deeper. <laughs> so that's a good example of turning it into a fun game. The taking a moment to be in the present moment and really notice what you see feel, smell, uh, and sense. Seeing would be too obvious because there's so many So I'm just getting set up. Apologies for 
my close up of my chin. <laughs> Oh, I'm just making sure the sound is on. Okay, good. So I'm going to begin with the beanbag toss. Let me move this out the way. So I have some cards here. These I've just printed, and they have the different a number of points you can get in a basketball game. So we have a three-pointer, a two-pointer, and a single point. So a single point is a free shot. I'm going to make that relatively easy to get to. And then I have two points, which is how many points you get when the ball is being defended and you're inside the semicircle where the hoop is. So it's a little bit trickier. So I'm going to angle it and move it a little further away from the pre-shot. Then we have this three-pointer. Now that's when if you're outside of that half circle and on another part of the court and you get a three. So we'll move that over there and make that a little more challenging. So typically you could stand up for this game just because of my camera view today. I am staying low to the floor. I just have a tip of beanbag, just a basic beanbag. And what I teach children to do is to just toss it and see how they go. And then we introduce mindfulness. And it's about centering yourself. So taking that moment really looking at where you want to toss the beanbag, taking a breath, and then using that breath to improve our aim. It's amazing how this works and how kids can tangibly feel and experience and see the results of using their breath and just taking that moment to center themselves before they toss which I was talking at the same time and clearly not focused. So that is the perfect example. So moving on, I have a yoga mat set up. You don't have to use a yoga mat for this. And I'm using my traffic cones today. So this is um, a little golf course that I've set up. And I have my golf ball I'm going to use a pom-pom, I'm just holding up a big one because I think that's easier to see. And we would start at the first hole and try to move the golf ball to the second hole, then to the third and then to the fourth. And the goal is to try and get a hole in one. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to go from this um, hole to this one today. Now, it's exactly the same as when we did the basketball or the soccer. I love this game because you see how it took, I had to come down on my belly. So already I'm getting a lot of tactile input. I'm also, this involves a lot of core because I've got a commander crawl on my belly. So this is really great for kids for developing that core. Now, I'm going to blow through the straw, lip closure, and tongue positioning are required for the straw. So this is really good for oral processing and for speech development. The lip closure and tongue positioning and the breathing all support that. Now, when I look down the straw at the pom-pom, my eyes converge. And then when I blow the straw, blow through the straw and blow the pom-pom, my eyes diverge as I watch where the ball goes. So this is converging and diverging for the eyes, which is supportive for children who are getting ready to learn how to read. Now, the breathing technique part. You want to take that easy breath. And try to blow it. I have an uneven carpet, so I don't think that's helping me at all here. But finally, I got it to the hole. Now, the goal would be to get a hole in one. So that would be using one breath to get it there, which I did. Now, so you get the concept of how you can use, how you can switch the air games up. This is the same air game we've discussed in previous webinars on breathing techniques for kids. 
just presented in a different way. It's presented as a golf game this time instead of a basketball game or a soccer game. I played baseball, we've run bases playing this, all kinds of tennis, all kinds of games. Again, it's your imagination, um, but the same basic concept. And then I have the good old egg and spoon race. Now this can be played with larger groups and teams, of course. I use this a lot for children who are challenged by um, getting super excitable, uh, perhaps uh, having the inability or the lack of ability has not yet, or the ability to be aware of their excitement level or arousal levels um, and the ability to control their arousal and excitement levels hasn't developed. So I use this as a tool when I'm working one-on-one -on -one with children very much, very often. So you will see I have this, I'm just going to use this obstacle. I may use these in between each movement activity. So if I'm working with a child who's learning some stretches, um, some yoga-based stretches, and every time we do a movement or a new pose or a new stretch, and I notice that child becomes excitable as a way to center and recenter and regroup and ground, we may come back to this game in between each. And I've done it before in between each posture. So for example, I'm using it's an egg, it's an egg and a spoon. So perhaps in between each, each posture or stretch, we'll come back to the start and we'll work our way through the obstacle, carrying the, balancing the egg on the spoon. And then when we get to the end, and this is why I like using these eggs, these are the Oriental Trading Company eggs. When you open them up, there's a surprise inside. So this one has a rhinoceros. You may not be theming your session around the toys that are in here. You can use the empty eggs, which you can also buy at Oriental Trading, Michaels, any of those companies, and you can put a little card or a little piece of paper saying what you're going to do in there as well. It doesn't have to be a toy every time. So what this does is brings the child back to a focus-based activity, mindful movement and mindfulness, moving meditation, and a little bit of a challenge where they have to focus, be calm, be centered, be still. If we're out of control of our body, we're not going to be able to control the spoon and, and keep it balanced. Oops, the egg, sorry, you keep it balanced on the spoon. So this is a great one. You don't have cones, that's not a problem. There's all you could use yoga blocks. You could, I just had a child walk around the edge of a mat. And it doesn't even have to be a yoga mat. Perhaps it's a rug like I have on the floor here. Perhaps it's a rug with a pattern on it and they could walk along following that pattern or a set course without dropping this, the egg off the spoon. So this is a really great tool. It's a fun game, but it can be incorporated as a class management tool or to help um, regulate the energy within a session, even in a private session or in groups with teams. So that's just a couple of um, the games explained. Please bear with me while I move the camera back and we will move on with the next section. And we're going to explore games that can be incorporated for three players or more. We'll just get back to our screen. Oh, it just, it's just a tad. Okay. So three or more players. You'll see here on the screen on the left, we have a downward dog tunnel. And we have kiddos in downward dog. So we're getting that stretch and we're sneaking that body movement in. Um, downward dog is a great full body stretch. Uh, it's also a, an inversion where the head is lower than the heart. And we have a child crawling through on her belly. So this again is that tactile input, it's coordination. It is core development. 
And a very important element of this game is so much fun, kids love playing this game, but is communication. Because if she is halfway down that tunnel and someone needs a break, they're not going to be able to come down on their hands and knees on top of that child that's crawling through. So I always teach kids before we begin this game, hey, before the kiddo crawling through, they ask if anyone needs a doggy rest. If someone needs a doggy rest, they know they've got to wait until the child passes through. Once a child passes through underneath, you can come down on your hands and knees or into child's pose and take a doggy rest. But you can't come down until the child has passed through. So we have to watch, we have to listen, and we have to talk and communicate with each other and support each other. So it's a really wonderful uh, game to incorporate in your sessions. And of course, you sneak that stretch in, you know, uh, and to hold downward dog for a longer period. On the right, we have some kiddos doing what we call hula hoop threading. So you can see they're passing, they're holding hands and we're passing the hula hoop hula hoop through. I have one here today. I can get different size hula hoops. So I have a kiddo one and a big one. And basically without breaking the chain, we pass the hula hoop through the body. So I'm going to get up and step through this one. And this requires coordination again, um, communication, communicating with each other, teamwork, support, empathy. Um, and again, this is a lot of fun. We pass it along and we all help each other and support each other and manage to pass the hoop from one end of the chain or circle to the other without letting go of the hands. So a lot of fun um, and uh, both, uh, this is a movement game uh, and a focus-based game and definitely both of these games require a lot of communication, which is obvious, I think, as we move into group activities where you are incorporating three or more players, communication is definitely key. So we're developing those skills for children um, and really supporting the development of strong communication skills. Uh, with each other. So let's explore seven more uh, games for three or more players. We have the bell game, which I'll play a video in just a moment of Jonah and I playing that. So that's one you can definitely play with one to two, but it is a lot more fun in a bigger group. Chalkboard. So this is a sensory input game. You may remember playing this as a child and we sit in a row. So if all the children sit facing one direction, one in front of the other, the person at the very back of the line will draw a shape or a letter or a number or some kind of message onto the back of the child in front of them using their finger. That child will then pass the message on. Now there's no verbal communication. This is all from sensory input. So by the time the message gets to the first kiddo in line, they will say the letter A or a heart or whatever they believe the message is. If they are correct, they get to come back and be the person that starts the message. If they are wrong, then we start over again with the original messenger and passing that message down until we get it right. So again, this is body awareness and sensory input development. It's also patience and empathy and communication. So it's a fun game to play with kids too. Another one we've explored in a previous webinar, which is fun. So there are two meditation games and I'm going to play the bell game for you in just a moment. A mindfulness and mindful breathing game is bird on a wire. So we have a little string here. So you have person A holding one end, they can be the tree. Person B will hold the other end, they'll also be the tree. And person C will be the wind who moves the bird from one tree to the next and then we all take turns. So that's our mindful breathing game. Movement, we've explored downward, downward dog tunnel. And downward dog tunnel, you can incorporate that as a revision game to revise any postures or movements you learned in your class. So I will have kids come down the tunnel and when they get to the end, after they've crawled through, they do their favorite pose or stretch from the class. 
and then they'll join the tunnel and become part of the tunnel as the next child takes their turn going through. Pretzel twist is another great way to review yoga uh, based stretches or movements that you've learned or even for kids just to explore their body and move. So this is one where I will randomly pull, I have pre-made just these little cards myself with names of body parts on it. So this one, for example, says two feet and two hands. So everybody has to find a stretch where only their two feet and two hands are on the mat. So for example, that could be downward facing dog. Um, and again, they're free to make up their own or to do one that you have already explored in the class. So that's a fun game as well. I find um, that's what the kid, kids get very creative with that one. They either get very creative and come up with um, new stuff or just completely invent stretches and postures and, and body shapes, or they rely on you and really watch what you're doing and, and, and then follow. Um, but both wonderful ways to learn and it depends on the learning style and the developmental stage of the child what you're going to get when you play that game. And then one that incorporates all oh, human dala. What is a human dala? So mandalas we have explored before and that's um, a meditation tool that is a piece of art or a focal piece um, that usually we color or we create on our own. Or you can buy them pre-done as well. There's um, you know, beautiful mandala designs you can find that are already colorful and just something that you simply gaze at and meditate upon. We've explored in previous webinars creating your own and coloring them, which is a form of meditation in itself. But to make one with your own body, uh, for example, sitting in a circle with everybody sitting with their hands touching and taking the hands up and down with the breath is a form like a lotus flower and that's a moving mandala, and I call it a human mandala <laughs> because it's, instead of a piece of art, it's humans making this shape. Um, I'm going to show you some resources at the end of this webinar, and one of the books actually has some examples of human mandalas that you can um, create, and it has some suggested ones where you can use different yoga poses, for example, a standing lateral bend with everybody standing and moving the same way in a circle. So we're making the mandala out of the people. And again, you can make it up. I've got a few examples in the book I'm going to show you. But again, you can work with the children and come up with your own um, human mandala design using everybody's body in a circle. And then, of course, the hula hoop link we just explored. Now, there are many more games. These are just a nice little spattering where I wanted to demonstrate how you can target specific goals, such as movement, meditation, and mindfulness, or incorporate them all by using games. So we're going to go back and watch the bell game. Especially younger children, you could just play the kind of like an I spy game. It could be fun because like they're looking around and then, oh, oh, first thing I saw was a book. Right, lots of books. Okay, so Jonah and I are going to show, demonstrate another game that really helps kids to focus well. This one's very common in yoga circles for children. It's called the bell game. So we're going to start. You ready? I'm going to bring one bell over, Jonah. So I'm going to bring a bell on a string and I'm gonna very carefully place it down in front of you, okay? The challenge is, I'm not supposed to make it ring. Do you think I can do it? I think. Okay, let's try it. So we've got a bell on a string, and I'm very, very gently going to place it on the mat in front of you, <coughs> bless you. <coughs> you okay, bud? <gasps> okay, now it's your turn. So we're gonna we'll start peeking for that one. Pick that one up and put it in front of me. Then and then we'll, that will. Oh, it's okay. Oh, it's <laughs> it fell out of your hand. Look carefully, John. Yeah. Okay. So now, if that's easy, sometimes it's easy. So it was that was easy for me, right? I it, it didn't ring. So I'm gonna make it a little more challenging for me. You're gonna use two. I'm gonna try two. You think I can do it? I don't think you can. You don't think I can? Well, we'll see. I'm going to try my best. Okay, so I have two bells on a string, and I'm going to carefully as I can 
This is the tricky part, I think. Oh! It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Did I take a touch? You can place it about there. Oh, you got it. Oh. I'm going to do three. You're going to do three? Okay. I already failed. That's okay. You just keep trying, right? It's no big deal if the belt rings, really. Right? We just do our best. Awesome. So that's a fun way. This works really well when you have large groups of children. Um, they really step up. Okay, so we'll move on to uh, group games that work for larger groups. So if you have five or more kiddos, movement, musical mats, or the island game. So this one I love to play with kids. I place mats or, and it doesn't, if you don't have yoga mats, it's not a big deal. You can just mark out different areas of the room with painter's tape, or I've used hula hoops to mark out personal space squares of carpet, whatever you're using, but identifying different areas. And we move around freely. And when the music stops or there's a bell sound or whatever you want to use to indicate it's time to move to one of those pre-designated spaces and create one of the yoga postures or stretches that you learned in your session. Now, We've all played musical chairs as a child, and you know that back when I played it as a kid, there was you got out, you 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 lost. <laughs> so we don't necessarily have to do that in our movement meditation and mindfulness sessions. I actually like to increase the challenge by saying, just because I take one of these spaces away, like I move one of these squares apart um, carpet, or I move one of these yoga mats, or I pull up the tape, whatever it is, I move one of those spaces, predetermined spaces away, you're still in the game. What you need to do is then find something that works with the people that are also in the same space as you. So for example, if there are three kids and there's only two yoga mats, somebody's going to end up on a yoga mat with somebody else or what I'm using yoga mat, but you know what I mean? It can be whatever space you use to create that space. And then eventually I take away everything. So there's only one space left and the whole group has to work together to find something that works on that one little area. So if it is a yoga mat and there's five kids, they have to work together as a team. They don't have to do partner poses or stretches, but they need to find. So, for example, maybe everybody does mountain pose and faces the same direction. So that's just a really fun game where we get to review any postures or stretches from the class. So we get to keep moving, moving around. We need to listen for when the music or cue to find a space and find a stretch. Um, occurs and then there's the teamwork and communication with each other to work together to make sure you can work together on that one space so that's a great game human tire run i use to review sessions now this is a little tricky to to talk through or demonstrate but if you imagine sitting with your legs wide like this facing each other so if this was sally and this was Peter, and we have our feet touching, and then we're side by side with our next set of friends. So you can imagine everybody sitting two lines facing each other with their legs wide and their feet touching. So you kind of make this, what I like a tire run, if you think of those from obstacle courses. So the per person at the end will come through and have to step over the legs and work their way to the end and then do a favorite yoga posture. So again, um, this is patience waiting for your turn. It is coordination, so you don't step on somebody's legs. Um, there's a little bit of obstacle course or challenge in um, physically moving from one end of the tire run to the other. And then you can use it to review postures or stretches. And then mindfulness games, Web of Love, this is a favorite of mine. 
using a ball of string, we'll sit in a circle and the person who's starting will hold on to the piece of string, think of a compliment and roll that towards the person they're passing the compliment to. The person who receives the compliment will then hold on to a piece of the string, think of a compliment and roll the ball towards the person they are passing that compliment to and so on and so on. And eventually you have this web made of the string in front of you. So the children see not only how connected they are, but um, they can see truly what people think of them. It's a nice reminder um, for some kids what they believe and even adults sometimes what we perceive or think people think about us is very different to what the reality is so this is a nice way to introduce compassion and empathy and the ability to see others um, and then to see how others see you and have an understanding of that i think sometimes children are quite surprised um for teachers in a classroom setting i've recommended keeping that web so instead of holding with the fingers maybe using a tongue depressor or a popsicle stick and giving each child one and they wrap their piece of string around that each time they receive it and that way it holds the web together and you can transfer it to a wall wall mount it and then use post-it notes to write some of the compliments and stick it on there and that's a nice visual reminder for the children to carry this lesson through the week, month, or however long you leave it up there, and a reminder of just how loved they are and how they really truly see each other. So this is a really nice one. I, lo I love this one. This one's good for siblings too. It doesn't have to be a class setting. Sometimes siblings uh, can clash. Um, I grew up with two siblings, and so as much as we love each other, I know we had our moments. Um, I'm sure everyone who's I've got a sibling or a cousin or you know or a neighbor um, that they interact with a lot um, you, you you'll be familiar with this um, if your kids interact with their neighbors or cousins or siblings I should say so this is a nice way um, just to remind kids subtly uh, how much they loved and how much they love each other and how they really do see each other and then hiding the beanbag I love this because this introduces intuition and that inner voice and that niggling feeling. It also introduces nonverbal communication and how to read the nonverbal cues that um, people give. So this one we would, I'm just going to use the ball of string because I don't have my beanbag handy, but we'll sit, I usually have kids in a group um, sitting together in a small circle and I'll break them up. If it's a large group of 20, 30 kids, typically I'll break them down to groups of five or six. Um, and we sit in those little groups and we pick one person who's going to leave the room. So one person will leave the room and then one person in the group hides the beanbag. So that's a pretty obvious place. So I'll put it under my arm. And then the person, the kids who left the room will come back to their respective groups and their job is to guess who has the beanbag. And they try as many times. And this is where the, instead of just letting kids play, this is where I will encourage, I'll be observing as a teacher and, and encourage kids, hey, take a moment, take a breath, listen to just your, your gut, if you're using that, if intuition is too big a word, or, or just that feeling you have. Wait to see who do you feel has it, not who do you think. Um, I'll encourage, hey, what about facial expressions? Is anybody giving anything away? Have a look at everyone's face. What about their posture or their body language? So we start that discussion. So you can really inform kids and start to develop those um, observation skills and also that fine tune in the listening skill um, of intuition as well. So it's a great way to introduce um, these concepts to children, which are, are wonderful tools to have moving forward in life. So that's just a few games for today. Some valuable resources. Um, the two books, uh, my two books, Teacher Child Meditation, uh, which uh, Sterling is the publisher, and Teacher Child Yoga. So there's plenty of bre mindful breathing and mindful uh, movement 
movement, uh, mindful meditation games in here, um, active meditation games in this book. Uh, there's over 70 techniques, so there's plenty in there and lots of playful approaches um, that you'll find helpful. Teacher Child Yoga actually has a whole section on games, and some of the games we did today are in this book. Um, for those who are at the live session, I'm going to be sending PDFs of some of the games that are not in this book um, today. You'll get those to download in the next five minutes. And then my ABC and number flashcards. These are available from my website, Your Your Yoga School. And I'll just pull a random one out. So the number ones, you think, oh, well, my kids are too old for this. These are learning numbers. So they're great for learning numbers. Uh, they're great for identifying number values. There's a game in here um, in the cards. And the, each this set, the games, uh, the um, number cards have 11 different activities and games that you can play that I specify here. And then, of course, what's my mantra? You're only limited by your imagination. You could probably come up with more. So I'm just going to pull a random card out. So we have, actually, that's probably not an easy one to see because it's yellow. So let's get a different color one out. So we have this one, we have the number seven. And then we have the yoga pose for a number seven or the stretch. So we also have, I'll see if I can find one. They're not just numbers. I have math symbols in here. And so here's the divided by sign. So we have the divided by. So you can see we're not just identifying number values, which this is great, a great tool for children who are learning their numbers. But for older kids, we do math problems and math Olympics and in teams we come up with little equations and then their partners solve them or the other team solves them but all using the body and body shapes. So this is really good for kinesthetic tactile learners. It's great just to incorporate some math um, into a movement session, especially now um, a lot of PE programs have been cut Right now, due to the COVID crisis, there are a lot of homeschool um, or hybrid school models. And this is a great way to get kids up and moving, but still learning at the same time. So, and again, 11 different activities and games. Games, 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 okay? Really vital for learning, fun and engaging for kids. And then here's the alphabet one. So the alphabet ones have um, sorry, the games have 12 different activities and games and um, the ABC number have 11. And again, you'll probably come up with some more. So actually, I'm just going to pull the Z out. So this one, we have the letter Z. And then on the back, we have instructions of making the shape. We also have some example of words that begin with the letter Z. And then we have several different um, stretches or breathing techniques. So for this one, we have a zinnia, which is a flower. So we have a bloom, a flower breath um, technique that's described. And then we have a zebra. So we have a pose, a yoga posture that is um, to make a zebra. And then of course we have this yoga pose as well. So there's different activities for each card. And then, of course, we have the option of what else begins with the letter Z? Show us in a yoga stretch or a body shape. And can your friends guess what you are? So there is another game as well. So I lied. There are actually 13. <laughs> you think of the game just that or the challenge that's on the card. Um, I did make these cards. <laughs> so... And I do recommend if you buy these, you can see mine are not laminated. Um, these are straight... These are the ones that I do sell, but my set that I use, I laminate it. So I recommend laminating them once you receive them. But again, this is not just for children to work on their sight words or learn to identify letters and learn sounds. This is great for older kids. We do spelling bee competitions with these all using the body. So you can make it fun and engaging for older kids. So these are tools that have a lot of games and activities great learning tools 
but can grow with children too. So it doesn't matter how old the children you work with are, these are great tools. And it's not just learning. I've had a social worker friend um, use the um, letter ones to communicate with a child who was nonverbal, a little withdrawn, uh, extremely painfully shy. And they started playing around with these and that was an icebreaker. And the child really began to open up. She started spelling her name with um, these using these stretches and her body, and then eventually became more comfortable to verbally um, open up and, and talk with the social worker. I also have a former student who took these to South Korea where she was teaching and started using these cards to teach children English. Um, I had a school teacher who have, teaches a class of special needs kids and they were learning number values. And she just said it was just so good for the kids to get up and move. They were bored, they were restless. And just to show the greater than, equal than, or equal sign when she was putting numbers up on the board and using their bodies, um, they got a lot of that energy out. It was a fun way to learn. And the next day they asked, can we please do that again? So not just for straight regular learning numbers and letters, so many different things you can do with these tools. And again, back to the subject of today's webinar, it's games, it's fun, it's engaging, but so, so, so important and developmentally supportive for children of all ages. So that brings me to the end of today's webinar. Um, if you are on the live session, I'm going to send you the link right now for these um, eight games, PDF hand up these eight games that are not in those books. Um, so you have access to those. And next week, I hope you are able to join me. We are going to foray starting next week into developmentally supportive movement meditation and mindfulness sessions for each specific age range. And we'll be beginning next week with toddlers, so that's two to three year olds. And we will talk, discuss what is developmentally appropriate, what is developmentally typical. So you can set, you can create things that are within the reach of children and not too advanced or, or for the older kids, not too boring. You want it to be a mix of developmentally appropriate developmentally supportive and a little bit of challenge. So there's some room for some growth and development as well. So we're going to explore all of that. And um, I'm going to take you through some lesson plans for each specific age group and really discuss the why behind what we're doing and how we can plan for kids and, and just get the expectations right um, for you so there's no frustration for you or the kids you're working with. I hope you join me and I look forward to seeing you next week and connecting with you virtually very, very soon.